All right, so today I'm gonna show you how to take a space like this and turn it into this. Let's get started. Any project where I'm using plywood, I start by measuring two sheets of three quarter inch plywood together to get a real world measurement. It's not exactly an inch and a half, it's a little less. From there, I'll cut the carcass of the cabinet and do a test foot. For the drawers, I'll use the base of the cabinet and two drawer slides to get a real world measurement of the drawer width. An upgrade I need for my shop is dust collection. I actually have one and I'm getting slightly frustrated by how poorly it's functioning. I'll find out why later. As I just found out, I wanted to use these pieces in half inch plywood and not three quarters. So we're keeping up a tradition and starting every project with a mistake. Fortunately, on the way back from grabbing half inch plywood strips, we realized that the dust hose isn't plugged in. So that would be why our dust collection was so bad. An important note for this project is I'm trying to use as much scrap plywood as possible. Plywood is extremely expensive right now. We're in November of 2022 and prices have come down a little bit, but not that much. What I'm currently cutting is all these sides for the drawers. You'll see why they're so small later. So a simple trick for cabinet assembly is just use a clamp on the end of your plywood sheet. It'll allow it to stand up on the table and make it much easier to glue and brad nail. And that's how we do most of our cabinet carcasses. We glue, brad nail, use parallel clamps, and then come back later and add screws. This particular cabinet doesn't need a back to it. Most of my cabinets, I absolutely add a back. It keeps the entire thing from racking, but with where this is going in such a tight space, it's not gonna move. So many parts. Okay. <sighs> Cutting with the grain and not all the tear out. Yeah. We're gonna have to do that for every single one. But before we do, I wanna see if this will even work. Basically, anytime I'm going to have a cabinet with a ton of drawers, I like to assemble one, make sure all my measurements are right before I assemble all six and realize I made a mistake. Might be putting the majority of this thing together with uh, brad nails, which is fine. They'll be strong enough. Normally, I would always use full side drawer bottoms, but because we're trying to use as much scrap wood as possible, I'm testing and see if this will even work for drawer stability, and we definitely needed Should wider need pieces. Wider. So, the little feet on the thing, yeah, I'm missing the feet just because of where it sits. My solution is just use a spacer and move the piece over slightly. This has been a big difference. I need to do a review on this. One, Air hoses, like, I mean, we have parts here, cool, it's always out of the shot, but uh, man, not having the compressor run is one part. Uh, secondly, just obviously moving, get in here, if that had an air hose, like, that would suck. But this thing, I, I don't know if this is that good, or it's just been the hose has always made me slightly off at an angle, but the amount of blowouts I've had using this has been way less. And yes, I know I sound like a Milwaukee fanboy and that's okay. I'm gonna get blowout now that I'm saying this. But if you guys have done it, to do half inch plywood, brad nailer, and not get blowout, it's pretty, it's a pretty big deal. I don't know, that's pretty satisfying. So proof of concept. So there's two reasons we made these so short in the front. I wanted the clips to hang. If it was different, they end up being this way or I just wanted the drawers short enough for those clips just naturally kind of hang on their own. So that's a good thing. But that's all we're gonna do. I mean, we're gonna knock out a bunch of these. Because they're so short, when I'm screwing them or trying to use screws, um, it's splitting the wood we can get in on that. The wood is literally wanting to split apart because it's such a small piece. Okay. So that's why I do one. So it's, I mean, just, just a little too tight. 
I mean, it'll work if we slam them, but I'd like them to be a little loose than that. We'll uh, take all our trim pieces, all, you know, 14 of these left over, trim just a tiny little bit off, and uh, I think we'll be good to go. I only left this part in here as a record of what could possibly be the worst splinter placement ever. Right at the crease of the base hmm. of my pinky. Man, I wish the camera could pick that up. That is dumb. Just an incentive to switch my table saw blades when cutting plywood to not get as much tear out. Whew. Be more careful. Okay. Uh, just for a little added extra with all these, we're gonna, we're gonna add a screw into the half inch plywood. Just because once I get all the screws in these drawer organizers, they're gonna add a little bit of weight and I don't want just two brad nails. If I put glue, I wouldn't have done this, but because of what we're doing, we're just gonna add one screw. We're gonna try, hopefully it doesn't split our plywood. So for all these, Single screw. Hopefully, it doesn't split half inch plywood. And, uh, yeah, I don't feel it splitting. So, if we can get through all those without a split, we'll be good. It's one of those two, like, I have three drills on the table. I get it. A lot of you guys aren't going to buy three drills, but for me, the switching back and forth, if I can do that pretty quickly, like that's, it's worth it to me, but I'm also running a business. So I don't have time. I have time. It's a luxury to have more. This is way more efficient to do all this. Same with, same with the whole reason that I did all my brad nails first and now I'm coming back and putting all the screws in. It's just faster. If I was doing one drawer, absolutely not. Like I would just left it on this side, brad nail, brad nail, screw, screw, been done. But because we're doing six drawers, this is better for me. Maybe not for everybody, but it's better for me. Like a hundred dollars in drawer slides. It's the reality of doing something like this. If you don't know, drawer slides are, uh, they can be expensive. So this is probably six of these. I think 10 pairs of these soft clothes drawer slides are like $85, maybe somewhere in there. So, not the cheapest. Cool. I think it's every four inches. So I did this on SketchUp. We got every four inches for where I need to screw these in. So I should be able to screw this first one in and measure up four inches and should be right according to SketchUp. That's why I use SketchUp. It, it's usually pretty spot on. So let's just put all the drawers and all the boxes just resting on each other and it should be good. Yeah, that'll work. So I can screw my first one in and just measure up every four inches and it'll give us perfect size. So I would rather do this, even though I know I did it on SketchUp, if you guys don't use SketchUp, you would have to measure your whole thing and say from the bottom of this drawer slide to the top of each one of these is three and a quarter inches. You would measure your entire thing. You would divide that for six spaces on top of adding a gap on the top. Um, but SketchUp, if you haven't messed with it yet, it's, it's really good. I, I enjoy using it for things like this. So SketchUp gives four inches. I still need to see it to make sure it's gonna work so I don't have to put all these in. I'll get like halfway up and then realize there's not enough space, like all the stuff with the accent wall. Oh, that was a nightmare. Uh, if you haven't watched the accent wall video, go watch that. Not our best quality kind of video, a lot of mistakes, but um, some learning curves. So anyways, we're gonna take all this out, drill our first ones in, and measure four inches up for each and every single one, and just put the slides in. So for these, just line it up flush with the face. If you're gonna put the um, face frames on, the reason you recess it back is because if you put it flush, 
you may have a gap between here and your door face drawer drawer face and it won't sit flush all the way if you recess it back a half inch especially with the soft close it's going to pull it tight so these will never be able to fully close so it's going to be constantly putting pressure pulling it tight that's why you recess it back just a tiny little bit but for this it doesn't matter there's no drawer fronts going on because then you wouldn't be able to open the drawers anyways or the uh, organizer box so here's what i'm gonna do i'm gonna cut this strip four and 13 16 wide once i cut that to that It'll give me, I'm gonna get one long enough, so it'll give me my line for the first set of drawer slides. I'll then take that piece back over to the table saw, I'll cut it at four inches, and I'll use that, line it up with my line, and then that'll give me my next four inches, and it'll be perfect. Take four 13 sixteenths, draw our line, We'll take our four and just line it up. Let's get more complicated. Do something simple. Make a jig. Everything. Jigs for everything. Etch now. Make. Boom. Perfect straight line. That's just a real quick, simple way to do it for doing multiple drawers. I then use the same jig to mark for all my screw holes. You don't have to pre-drill for your screws, but I like to. I find it keeps me from stripping out the screws and all of the drawer slides. If you remember earlier, I said I'm not adding a back piece to my cabinet, and that's because I'm not worried about racking. And that's because this cabinet is the definition of a perfect fit. It's going into this outfeed table. I left the space earlier when I originally built it for the reason of being modular. And if I don't like where these drawers are, I can take both these cabinets out, the one I'm installing and the one to the left, and move it somewhere else in my shop later on. One of the reasons I didn't glue in the half inch pieces to the drawer bottoms was because I am mildly worried about the strength of these. So if I find out later over time they're not holding up, I'll come back and add full sheets of half inch to all the drawer bottoms, add glue, add screws, and we'll be good to go. Hopefully that won't be necessary. In the meantime, this was a perfect solution to my storage needs and ever evolving shop expansion. If you have any questions on why I did some of the things I did, please comment below. Thank you so much for watching.